Push a man, push a man, mm, push put your man. hand on my thigh. I, just want I need chills up and down my mm. spine. Baby, can you get me high? Ooh. Push a man, push a man, put your hand on my Hello there. This is Rom Wills coming at you again with yet another video. Yeah, I'm um doing this a little off camera just going to uh, do an audio file today because uh, I ain't going to lie my brother missed a haircut and you know the dude looking kind of raggedy and stuff and you know I don't feel like cutting it and all that stuff but I said hey the show must go on yeah today I'm going to talk about good boyfriends versus bad husbands and Instead of promoting my, you know, my stuff, my usual stuff, I'm going to be promoting another gentleman's book um, by the name of George uh, Subira. And that book is Money Issues in Black Male-Female Relationships. Now, this uh, elder who's now um, an ancestor, he's, uh, he passed away a few years ago. He wrote a, he wrote a powerful book in, back in the 90s. And I would just say it's so powerful. It was, yeah, you know, some a lot of what he said in the book served as an inspiration for my work, especially nice guys and players. Now, there's a very powerful passage I want to read to the listening audience today, and very very powerful it's going to be kind of long and it, you know that's kind of why I wanted to do the video this way because I just wanted to focus on just reading this and I just want the listener just to sit back and really think about what's being said so he has a, a chapter in a book called choices in the dating game and then a, a subsection of it is called picking Vo Picking boyfriends versus picking husbands. So let me read it. <coughs> Excuse me. I believe that a major problem in the success of black male female relationships is that women confuse the criteria they use to select boyfriends with the ones they use to select husbands. Boyfriends, as we see by the high school patterns, are to provide fun. A boyfriend takes you places that your own knowledge or your own money may not have allowed you to go. A boyfriend is also supposed to be fun to be with, which could mean any number of things. It could mean that because he's older and more experienced that you are always learning from him and so every experience is a further adventure into adulthood and learning about life. Fun could be that your boyfriend is funny. He makes you and others laugh so that during the time you are with him, your other problems don't really exist. Your boyfriend is the kind of escape that makes alcohol or drugs unnecessary because his sense of humor takes away your depression and frustration. Fun could also be based on the idea that a boyfriend is crazy. Crazy meaning that they take risk, perhaps dangerous risk, illegal risk. And in so doing, introduces his girlfriend to the very side of life that her overly protected parents and older siblings always protected her from. This fun could be based on a woman witnessing and or participating in actions which step over the line ever so slightly in order that she may feel the rush of the excitement which comes from doing illegal things. Doing alcohol or drugs, racing cars, gambling, making love in a public place, or any number of crazy things could be fun fun could just be consuming a large portion of the common entertainment activities that saturate this country from one end to the other dances concerts clubs plays movies boat rides amusement parks museums etc etc i have been in ladies homes where they collect the ticket stubs of the events they've gone to and the ticket stubs fill a small fishbowl big fun eating is fun to everybody and of course there's sex virtually everybody's definition of fun some people's religious or moral principles may exclude sex as part of the fun package but even in the age 
of AIDS and other sexually transmitted diseases, sex is usually the activity which highlights the other fun experiences. But fun costs money. Not always a lot of money, but it adds up. Money is required in most cases for a boyfriend to supply the fun that the ladies of all classes look to have. The classier the lady, the more expensive her taste in defining what fun is much of the time. The second thing the boyfriends are supposed to do is make her feel good. A naive young man might assume that if you are taking a lady out and providing her the opportunity to have fun that you are already making her feel good. But that is only partially true. In addition to the activity, making her feel good, you have to make her feel good. You have to give sincere or sincerely express compliments on her looks, her hair, dress, makeup, nails, etc. You have to integrate all the romantic moves, including flowers, wine, and music, into the evening as the situation calls for, and your pockets can stand. And you have to do this in such a way that you communicate the idea that you have no expectation of receiving anything in return. Nothing makes a woman feel more special than getting something for nothing. In spite of what you read or hear, the pedestal image is still good to go. If the boyfriend has made it up to this point, he's in good shape, but he could still blow it if he's not careful. The next step in making her feel good is the occasional gift. The American economy is set up so that it is stimulated by the spacing out of gift-giving occasions in virtually every month. There is your Christmas Kwanzaa gift, Valentine's Day gift, birthday gift, graduation or promotion gift, anniversary of the relationship gift, housewarming gift, and the occasional for no particular reason gift. Women are supposedly more romantic than men, so symbolism is important to them. We know they are more materialistic than men, so that will work too. A smart boyfriend will check out what kind of gift profile his lady has. <coughs> if she is an it's the thought that counts sister, it means you can give a steady flow of relatively inexpensive gifts. If she is a quality is better than quantity sister, it means you can skip a few occasions, but you're going to have to come up with something nice when you do give a gift. Otherwise, you will be labeled as cheap. If you have a sister that expects quality or quantity, or quality and quantity, you better count your money. Trying to be the perfect boyfriend is like trying to be the perfect Christian, Muslim, or Jew. It is an ideal that you will never reach. Many sisters are looking for their own idea of perfection. You, the boyfriend, may have no real idea what that idea of perfection is. But many brothers like the challenge of being the perfect boyfriend, so they practice hard until they have it down to an art form. They are called a ladies' man, and they become very successful being somebody's boyfriend. Which brings us to our next topic, husbands. Probably the single biggest mistake that women in general make is to assume that the perfect boyfriend will make a perfect husband. When women say they are looking for a good man, nothing could be more vague. A good man for what? A good man for the Dallas Cowboys? For the president's cabinet? Or one that makes you feel good? It is surprising when we see over and over how women complain about the husbands that made such good boyfriends. Husbands, in most people's perspective, have, have to be men who have no problem assuming responsibility for whatever they might be called upon to do within reason. And usually, a person who's a, who assumes responsibility has that as one of their personality traits long before anyone is thinking of marriage. And to many husband type of men, it might seem an irresponsible use of time, money, and total resources to try to come anywhere near being a perfect boyfriend. As a matter of fact, many good, bo many good husbands were probably very bad boyfriends from the standpoint of the make me feel good, be funny and fun love, and spend money on me, act crazy behavior. Men who assume responsibility tend to think other people should do the same, including women. So, they might... They might think that instead of their job being to make a woman happy, that the women should make themselves happy or that they should already be happy with themselves. A man has to be ready to provide everything financially when needed, has a difficult time respecting a woman who is ready to provide virtually nothing, nothing most of the time. 
It's like expecting a Mr. America or a Mr. Universe to marry a woman who is lazy and obese. It is not impossible, but don't hold your breath. Responsible men aren't necessarily strict or serious about everything, usually just their money, energy, and time. The very things they are asked to spend rest, reckless, recklessly in order to be the life of someone's party. If all of this is true, then it would appear that the so-called problem with black men is perhaps due more to black women's poor understanding of and their poor judgment of the men in their lives rather than the men themselves. In other words, people are creatures of habit, and one is slow to change even when they are aware that they should. If a woman agrees to a relationship for years based on criteria that defines a good boyfriend, she is very likely to be unqualified to determine what kind of person will make a good husband because she, ha she hasn't looked at and become familiar with those type of characteristics in men. Many men suffer ridicule after marrying these type of women. The fun-loving guy is told, why don't you grow up? The free-spending guy who's always spent his money on date now hears his wife saying, why are you, we, always broke? For the professional boyfriend, relationships are still a game to him, and a risk taker eventually crosses the line and lands in jail for a very long stretch of time. What women do is blame the men for being the very men that cause a relationship to come together in the first place. They love the men the way they were. Now, all of a sudden, in the marriage, they don't like the way the men are because their behaviors don't lead to the new and different wants and goals that the women have. But whoever suggested that a personality, personality could change as quickly as a woman's new wants? Men go through all kinds of changes to please women, but these habits can't be changed at the drop of a hat. If a woman wants a good husband, she shouldn't be out looking for the traditional good boyfriend. Boom. Yeah, um, I wanted to share that. Now, even though it was a book focused on black male-female relationships, that whole good boyfriend, bad husband, or, you know, men who are, you know, good boyfriends, but, you know, or... Well, let me put it another way. Men who were probably bad boyfriends because they went all into their fun and all of that, but they just, you know, good guys. You know, that that's something that really touches all, all races, social class, and everything. Yeah, this gentleman wrote from, um, you know, a black perspective. But, I mean, this is something that I've seen in white communities, um, uh, not as much in Hispanic communities, but I'm not as familiar with them. I've seen it with uh, some Asians. I mean, I've seen the. I mean, it's the same pattern, and I've seen it with women all over the world. They get the fun guy, but then when it's time to settle down, you know, they mad that this person don't want to settle down. Or I've seen a lot of women, known a lot of women. They will have a be in long term relationships with some guys, never marry them. They all of a sudden break up and then get married to some new guy within a year. You know, but it would be the same type of guy that they wouldn't have dated before. And I just wanted to share that. I mean, there's a lot of powerful stuff in that book, but that was one of the most powerful. I would say that passage alone made me still really think about doing nice guys and players when I did it. Because... You know, what is the good boyfriend? He's the player. But then once women get tired of that, they go to the nice guy because he, he'll be the good husband. And a lot of men have actually heard that, too. A lot of men have heard a woman say, you know what? You'll make a good husband. And women, some women out there, you know, they're doing their partying and all that. They'll, they'll know that one guy that they say, you know what? If I ain't married in five years, I want to marry you. And, you know, and I've heard of cases of women even proposing to some men who, you know, they deem to be good guys. So you know, women know what's up with this. But I wanted to share that. And um, I included a link for uh, this uh, Ancestors book in, um, in the, um, you know, description section. I mean, check it out. It's, it's powerful. I mean, you talk about a lot of things. And I'm going to be honest. Um. And even though I said the book is in general, you know, any, anybody could read it and maybe get something from it. Like I said, it was written from a black male perspective. It's probably the best book out there. 
which means a lot of people haven't heard of it. <laughs> you know, that's what that's what that means. It means a lot of people haven't heard of it. But that's how it is. You know, people want the soft stuff. This is some hardcore stuff that makes a man think, makes a woman think. It don't let anybody off the hook. So, yeah, definitely check it out. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. You know, I'll show my face on screen next time. Hopefully, I, you know, my everything won't be as raggedy. I'll break out, like, one of those, like, three or four pair of clippers that I got back there and actually cut the do. So, anyway, uh, I want to thank you all for listening. Peace and blessings. Push a man, push a man, mm, push put your man. hand on my thigh. I, just want to I need touch. chills up and down my mm. spine. Baby, can you get me high? Ooh. Push a man, push a man.